Hi, it's Bridget. I am really, I really feel really relaxed and casual today, but I really want to talk with Elvis because I feel his energy and I'm not sure why. Today is Saturday, June 30th, 2018. I don't know if June 30th is significant for Mr. Presley or not, but I would like to get to know him a bit. You know, I, I, I feel like I know um, Prince really well in the afterlife for his spirit energy, and I feel like I know Michael Jackson pretty darn well in the afterlife as well. And Elvis is another one that just has such a nice energy, and I like him. I've always liked Elvis. I don't know a whole lot about him, but I, I've always liked him. And so I'd like to get to know him a bit. And if you are watching this, you are watching this at Above Life channel, be sure to subscribe. And it's important for you to recognize or for you to know actually that you have the opportunity every week to watch new channeling videos with different guests. And if you subscribe, then you'll get a notification of that. So that's just handy for you to know. The goal here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. I hope you enjoy these, these conversations. Um, so this is gonna be casual, obviously. I just went for a walk and it's, it's a, I'm in Minnesota and it's a humid, it is a humid day. It feels like the middle of July and it's, we're just tipping into July, July here. And it reminded me of um, Tennessee. I've only been through Tennessee once and uh, it was hot when I was there and I know I just had a, a client, a session with a client from uh, Nashville area and I guess Nashville's like three hours from Memphis or so and so I'm just I'm kind of feeling the vibes there and um, I, just a few moments ago I was just sitting out here on the deck and my husband um, and I were chatting and I said geez you know I said I really feel like channeling talking to someone but I'm not sure who and I say, I feel, I keep feeling Elvis, so, but I don't know what to ask him. So we're gonna have a casual conversation and I'm gonna let you guys watch, okay? So it's not gonna be as like formal as it sometimes is. Well, that's okay, it's like coming into a holiday week here in the United States and so it's kind of feeling casual, summer, finally summery in Minnesota. And I saw you right away, Elvis, I appreciate that. He says, yes, ma'am, so polite. When I first saw him, so he's over to my left side, he's kind of right in alignment with a pillar that's on our deck, it's a covered deck back here. And he's like leaning up against a pillar and kind of has his hands kind of really comfortable, kind of at his waist. And he was wearing his white jumpsuit. And then um, as soon as I looked at him, actually looked at the energy and kind of zoomed it in a little bit, um, he now has, like a white jacket, black pants and a black shirt. And the jacket is like a, uh, it's not a tuxedo, but kind of. And it's got like a, on the pocket, it's got like a black little trim on the pocket, if that makes sense to you guys. And then there's like a pocket on one of the sides. I'm trying to look. I think it's on this side. The, I think it's on the right side. And it's got a, it's a white jacket with a little black trim again on the pocket. But there's not a handkerchief in there. It's just a trim on the pocket. And he's showing me a red rose. Oh, that's really nice. And I'm not sure if he's intending to give it to all of you to express love or thank you. Gratitude, he says, he's saying, he's acknowledging gratitude, appreciation. Thank you. Thank you to the fans, he says. Thank you. Thank you, he says. That was really sweet. You're welcome, ma'am. He's super polite. He's always polite. Um, you know, you do know Elvis, you are like, in human years, you were like a lot older than me, right? You know that, right? Um, but since you died, in the afterlife, spirit can show up to you however you will recognize them and, and or can show up specifically to represent an era that they would like you to talk about or they would like to, you to know about or feel the energy for. And so, and I feel like, I feel um, his younger days, he looks younger when I'm looking at him. Um, yeah, he's younger, yeah, he just looked down. He's got such great structure on his cheeks, like very chiseled, like on his jawline and his cheeks, cheekbones. And, and then the, these lips kind of, like the chin and the lips are a little more full on. Um, yeah, he's a good looking guy, I gotta say. 
<laughs> spirit <laughs> spirit in the afterlife i don't know <laughs> Uh, I'm not swoony though. Let's just be clear. I'm not swoony on that. It's just nice, very polite. So I just I wanted to acknowledge your energy. So how do we? And I want to get to know you in the afterlife as well. Um, is there anything specific that you feel? Well, let's see. Let me. How should I ask this? Oh, yes. Okay, so I have kind of a fun question. How about that? Instead of getting like all deep and serious and stuff, since we're just hanging out outside, it's a nice summer day. Um, so in the afterlife, uh, there are a lot of musicians. There are wonderful entertainers that are in the afterlife now that are crossed over. And I'm curious, have you all met each other? And how does that work? I mean, I know, I know as a psychic, as a medium, that it doesn't, like we're not all people and you guys don't just hang out like in a bar or something. I mean, it's not like that. It's not, there's none of the human characteristics in that regard. I understand that. But there's still a relationship and there's still connection. And there's gotta be a way that we can portray and you can share how you connect with others who had similar interests, other musicians, like when they come over to the afterlife and there's somebody that's like iconic that you would have respected. How, how does that work? Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think some of us as fans really, we want to, we want to imagine that you're all jamming out together. And when I've talked to Prince and John Lennon previously, they kind of talked about like and and actually prince referred to tom petty too and his guitar skills and that kind of a thing so there's definitely this beautiful respectful energy among you but how does it really work like are you hanging out you know i mean and who's there like who do you hang out with like i know it's not again a human form but but as a spirit how does that work i know i talk a lot i'm sorry about that i have many words <laughs> He says, you have many words. You have a lot of words. Yes, I do. <laughs> all right. It all just depends on what you like, he says. The different genres. He's showing me kind of what looks like a, kind of like a bar in, in Memphis. Um, down by the water, it looks like, like um, kind of country-ish, country music-ish, blues, Bluegrass-ish, like esque, esque like. Um, he says you attract with you attract with what you know. So, if musicians die and they leave their bodies and they come into full spirit, he says it's easy to connect with what you know. And uh, like if you're a fan of somebody and. In the afterlife, you would naturally gravitate toward that energy because it's common and something you know. And I, I think that we just build upon each other's energy real, in real supportive ways, you know, like a kind of like a band, like an orchestra, actually, not a band, an orchestra, because there's so many different variations, different instruments, different energy, different spirits create different energy in that orchestra, he says. He's kind of giving me this analogy. I really feel him in my solar plexus. So that's the tummy, low tummy, and that's what intuition is. When you have a common purpose in your human status, in the way that you live your life, when you move into the afterlife, it's similar in that regard. And you'll be drawn to or attracted to what you know. Because what you know is as you just mentioned in your soul it's inside you and that's your spirit just knows and in the afterlife that doesn't go away it just becomes more natural it's more comfortable i would say it's more comfortable because you're not you're not dealing with the crowds of fans and people and demands and there's not the pressures here so you can just be with other musicians and just be in this energy space that's why I think, he says, incident, incidentally, he says, that's why I think that music is so important to you. You collectively. He's saying the you is people, you, us, humanity. 
because of the incredible power, the healing power that comes through that energy. You use the word energy, Bridget. Uh, I don't really use the word energy. That's really not my vocabulary as a human person, but as an afterlife spirit, you can connect with me in ways that others cannot. And I'm okay with that, using those words that are most comfortable for you to use. I do really, I want people to understand that there's true, pure joy in having that kind of freedom, that emotional freedom, that freedom from oppression, whatever your oppression is. He keeps like, he's like looking at the side of his lip a little bit. There's tremendous freedom. I would like to speak about the reunited, the question of re being reunited with loved ones. I think that's something, that's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. And had I known that, for sure, I would have had more peace when my mama died. I wanted to believe but um, the mind is so limited in its beliefs. It just isn't that powerful in the mind to convince you fully that God will reunite your family. So I'd like to talk about that and tell people that when you die, be assured that you will find your peace with your maker and you will be united with your loved ones those whom which you love and you do not need to be afraid of facing your enemies there's no villains here <laughs> there's no villains in your heaven there's no villains so Elvis Were you afraid of death? Were you afraid to die? I mean, had you thought about that? I'm sure sometimes when we lose someone so close to us, like when you lost your mom, it can make us really question, you know, our own mortality. It did for me when I lost my dad, when my dad passed away. And for the first time I realized that I wasn't invincible, you know, like I'm a human person and and I was just shy of 30 at that point in my life. So I'm curious, were you afraid of death? Did you fear death? That's a good question. That's a real good question. I think, I think it's right to say there's natural to be some fear because the unknown is fearful. It's darkness, it's mystery, when you can't see the path clearly. But I think my faith in God gave me assurance that I didn't spend too, much, too many sleepless nights worrying about death. I knew my mama was at peace. I missed her terribly and so I knew that when I died it wouldn't be sad it wouldn't be sad for me now it's true I'd leave my family behind and my daughter and my daddy and others did your dad die after you did I'm feeling like yes I'm feeling like that's yes. I could be wrong on that. It feels like there's another man that was really dominant. I could be wrong on that. Somebody, I think it's your dad though. You know, and that brings up a good question, Elvis, if you don't mind talking about that. 
In your life, there was a lot of focus around your mom and and we all knew how how close you were and I mean it's it's well you know well known I guess um, I guess I did I didn't know that until after we talked I guess I don't think I did anyway maybe I did I don't remember um, but what about your dad I mean what kind of relationship what did you have with your dad and and was it influential and if so how how was it Daddy liked to be behind the scenes. He didn't really want to be in the limelight. He didn't care much for the, the fanciness of things. He just wanted to be comfortable. Daddy was a good man. He was a working man. He worked hard. And I think that maybe he felt a little bad when I could actually give and provide and give some things to my family that we hadn't had, that Mama didn't have. and. I think maybe he felt a little bad about that, but he never took it out on me. He was never mean to me. He was a little hard on me at times, but I don't, I don't think that was when I was a boy, you know? I mean, I did, I was a little wild. I mean, I made some, you know, you would say, cause you're a mama, bad choices or not such good choices about who you hang around with. And uh, I think my daddy just, got on me a bit for that but uh, let me make my own he let me make my own choices for the most part even the bad ones you know everybody makes mistakes though you know you got to make those when you're young so that you don't make them when you're old everybody kind of got to have that little wild side and that kind of experience in life but daddy he no I mean he he supported me, but he just, he didn't really want to be a part of the whole music thing. And the, he didn't really understand it much. I don't think he really believed it could be what it became. But uh, he never stopped me and he never, he was never rude about it or harsh about it. But he wasn't, uh, he wasn't real vocal about it in those regards. So I never felt not supported by my daddy. My daddy was a good man, good working man, hard worker, hard working man. And he provided for his family the best he could. And I am, uh, I'm thankful for that. Maybe I worked hard too because of that. It's hard to say, you know. It's hard to say how much now when you're in the afterlife, when you're spirit, you have a different viewpoints on things some things change because you don't have your mind that stops you and makes you go into kind of a, the thoughts you know the cycles of thoughts that you have and you don't want to feel depression here you don't feel what you folks call depression you know back in the time when I was around the music industry and nobody ever talked about like depression or mental health or I mean, it was just fatigue and, um, you know, sometimes people have pills to make them go to help them go to sleep and calm down after a real wild night of performance. <laughs> or uh, they would uh, get some pills to wake them up to do a performance, you know. I mean, and myself included, I'm not excluded from that. But, uh, I mean, that was pretty common practice. I mean, that was just the thing you did. That was normal. You know, coffee just isn't going to do it when you're on the road you know and if you drink yourself to sleep you're gonna be sick and nobody's gonna do that that's just not that's pretty ridiculous to do that you learn pretty quick that's not gonna work for you you want to keep your body and your vocal cords in the best shape you can but when you're young you're stupid sometimes you're stupid you make choices that are not so good but you learn you know you learn from those mistakes and uh, but it was just normal you know to take Take what you need to take to get the job done and to, to give it give give you all for your fans. That's the most important thing. People need to like what you got. And then they buying what you're selling. Basically, they're buying your records. And then you know you're doing good stuff. You know, you know you're doing good when you're selling records. People are buying your records and they're sharing them with other people. And they're playing you on the radio. And that's when you know you're doing good. That that feels good. 
he's feeling like the earlier part of his career has more joy energy in it, more excitement. Um, you know, there's a lot of criticism from what I've heard anyway, I've seen on some of the comments on our first video when we talked about later on in your career, how um, the manager that you had, the Colonel, um, you talked about him in the first video and I wasn't really sure who he was, but um, some of your fans have typed and shared comments and, and kind of versed me in that. And I understand that later on in your career, then there was some criticism of how, you know, you were limited, like you couldn't travel the world because your manager couldn't go with you. And, you know, how big would you have been then? And what did you miss out on? And, and that you were kind of stuck doing Las Vegas shows. I mean, how do you feel about that now? I mean, I mean, how do you feel about that now? Reflecting back upon that time in your human life, how do you feel about that? He says, everybody. Everybody does the best they can do at the time. You don't really have the benefit of all this, this knowledge at that time that you make decisions sometimes. But I, I don't blame anyone, anybody for anything about my career. That's, those are my choices. I made choices. And I felt very loyal to the Colonel. And he, he was loyal to me. I, I believe that he had my best interest, that he really wanted me to do well. I don't, I don't question his motives because that's not for me to judge. I'm not the one to judge that. I know people have opinions about that. I've been told that. I was told that in my lifetime. But you got to understand, when you, when you build a bond of trust with someone, and you take a man at his word, that loyalty means everything. And that meant a lot to me. So I did what was asked of me. I was real tired at the end. The schedule was really, it was, it was rough on me. It was taking its toll. I wasn't as young as I used to be. I wasn't that old either. It was only in my forties. But I'd say, I think I needed a break. Would that have helped? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Might have gave me an excuse to pull away. More likely I would have been a recluse. Just pulled away from everything. And my fans weren't overwhelming or overpowering. There was such, so much love, such good people. I really wanted to not disappoint my fans. That was real important to me. They become like family, you know. They become a part of who you are. They become part of your heart. And you could feel them and what they, they want and their desire for you to perform. It becomes part of your heart. It beats your heart. And I felt very loyal to my fans and I really wanted to give back to them. And, and to be real honest with you, Miss Bridget, it, it doesn't... It didn't really matter how. I would give back. I, I just wanted to be there and share that, that love, that stream of love back and forth, you know, it's just a, an exchange. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. It's really hard to explain when you're live on stage, when you're live. It's really, it's a very difficult thing to explain looking out and just feeling that that hum of cheers and people crying and signs and waving and you just feel so blessed so very blessed and i would never want to let any of them down none of my fans they were very important to me
very important. They were like my family. They were part of my heart. He says, God, he is so sweet. I just want to cry right now. The energy's overwhelming. Hmm. And now I see that red rose that he had symbolically. Now it's like on the lapel, his lapel. Oh my gosh, that was really emotional. I don't know how to explain that. Well, Mr. Elvis Presley, you are a joy to speak with. You're so honest and you do a very wonderful job of explaining human perspective from your spiritual viewpoint. Very, very good job. Very good job of explaining. I just, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you willing to be so honest and open. I know that the fans, the viewers here at Above Life Channel would want me to tell you, thank you so much. And thank you for all of your sharing your music and, and performing and for all that you did for so many people. You brought so much joy and, and so much love. And, and we, they, I know they would want to say thank you. Thank you very much for all your human work that you did. And, and I want to say thank you for connecting in the afterlife and being open to that. I really would love to talk to you more. You just are just a joy to speak with. It's like, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come on. He's like, are you going to do an impression? <laughs> He's like, thank you. Thank you very much. And he kind of does this with his shoulders, kind of. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Doesn't really, <laughs> I can't really do it, Elvis. <laughs> it's like, I'll teach you. I can teach you. <laughs> okay, you guys, for those of you who are watching this video, if you made it this far, this was a casual, more of a casual conversation with Elvis. Oh, so much emotion. That was beautiful. And wow. Okay. I didn't really anticipate all of this. And so sometimes these are the best conversations to have with the afterlife. And remember, you can connect too for yourself, right? The purpose here is to inspire your spirit. And I hope that we did that today. And one of the most important things I really, we would love for you to remember is that this is your life right now. This is your life. So live it. Thanks for being here. If you have any comments uh, about this particular video or you have some really great questions that we could chat with Elvis about in upcoming videos, <laughs> please put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here.